Hey, what's up guys? Alex here with a new video, and today we're gonna to be doing a review on the Leica Q2. Now, like I do with all my reviews, I will be putting up pictures I've taken with this camera uh, throughout the video. I will actually be putting up every picture twice because uh, this is the first camera where I've actually shot RAW plus JPEG, and all my JPEGs have been black and white, and I've fallen in love kind of seeing the viewfinder and seeing the world in black and white, so you'll see that. But why did I pick up a Leica Q2? Uh, uh, this channel is all about the Canon EOS R and how much I love that camera. And that still stands, right? The Canon EOS R is my workhorse. It's my, my professional camera. It's what I use for weddings, corporate work, headshots, maternity sessions, family sessions. It's the go-to camera. RF lenses, I think, are the best lenses on the market right now. Absolutely stunning. But there's something psychologically, and uh, this, this sounds very pretentious, and I hate saying it, but it's just how I feel, right? And I, I know there's other photographers that feel this way. When I use a Canon EOS R for eight hours on a Saturday, 10 hours on a Saturday, I don't wanna pick up that camera the next day, right? It's, it's my work camera. Like, uh, I see it and I associate it with work, and it enables me to move quickly. It enables me to photograph very differently from what I really want to do with my personal work, right? So for the last few years, I've had a personal camera. So it started off a few years ago with the X-Pro2, the Fujifilm X-Pro2. Then I got the Fujifilm X-Pro3. And those were cameras I took with me on vacations, I took with me on work trips, kind of took with me everywhere. I left it in my backpack, so every time I went to work, I always had a camera with me in case I needed to take pictures, right? Um, so it's like my go-to cameras. And as kind of time progressed, I've always wanted a Leica, right? Uh, before I was a photographer, before I was into cameras, I was an Apple fanboy, still am. And I'll never forget when Steve Jobs announced the iPhone 4 and compared it to a beautiful Leica camera. The first thing I did was straight up just Google what, what the hell is a Leica camera. And from that moment on, fell in love with the design of a Leica, how it looked. And I'm also a believer that a camera won't make you a better photographer. But if you enjoy the camera you're using, or if a, the tool you're using inspires you, it, it, it'll give you something, right? So I see this camera, like I saw the Fujifilm X, X-T3, I just wanted to use it. I just, the way it felt in the hand, the way it looks, I just wanted to use the camera, I just wanted to have it on me at all times. So yeah, it's not gonna make you a better photographer, but if the tool is something that you actually genuinely wanna carry with you everywhere, it's gonna enable you to take pictures that you didn't take before. But with all that said, like a Q2. So it's a $5,000 camera with a fixed lens. Now, I saw that as a good thing at first because you can't spend any more money, right? Your all-in costs $5,000, get a fixed lens, a 28 mil 1.7 Sumalux with macro capabilities and autofocus with a Leica and a 47 megapixel body, weather sealed, with no ports, right? Absolutely no ports. Leica's not a technology company, right? They're, they're M cameras, their bread and butter are all manual cameras. You usually aren't the first to the market with new technology. And this camera does have a 47 megapixel sensor, does have an amazing lens, does have an amazing Wi-Fi app where you can actually transfer raw files wirelessly to your iPhone or iPad, which is amazing. The only area that's actually kind of just behind it is this autofocusing technology. So it uses contrast detect versus a phase and contrast detect combo. So on paper, it's gonna be a slow focusing camera. In reality, it's not the fastest, but it's not slow at all. It's very usable. It's actually, it never slowed me down. Again, I use this camera for personal work, not quick moving subjects. So it never really failed me. For the review, I wanna cover three things. Image quality, build quality, and is it worth it? So image quality, this camera blew me away. 47 megapixels, this sensor, it's the same sensor used in the Leica SL2 and the Panasonic S1R, I believe. It's phenomenal, like it's just tons and tons of detail. They're huge files. I think a raw file for this camera is around 97 megabytes to 100 megabytes, but the detail is there, dynamic range is there. Uh, overall, just such a, fun file to play with. The Leica RAW files just 
out of the box are amazing. So when you import a Canon RAW file, a Nikon RAW file, any RAW file, it's a very flat picture. Uh, it's meant to be, right? It's a RAW file. The Leica RAW files kind of have a punch to them, a vibrancy to them. They're just so easy to work with. They're already almost halfway there when you import them. So I've been blown away at how much I've enjoyed editing these files. I've also been blown away by the JPEG. So uh, like I said earlier, I've shot this camera in RAW plus JPEG and all my JPEGs have been black and white. And the Leica black and white uh, settings, is, it's just a gorgeous black and white. It's very filmic. And I, it's actually made me kind of, I created an Instagram that's all black and white. And I've even printed JPEG files that are just black and white. And they have been stunning. So I have a, a few eight by tens that I printed here uh, just on my Canon Pixel printer. Uh, these are JPEG black and white files. And these JPEG files are pretty big and the, the detail is just stunning. It's gorgeous. Um, it, it's, it's just unbelievable that I've been such anti JPEG my whole life. And here I am like printing and really enjoying um, the black and white JPEG files. I love this one. Uh, this this guy is, he calls himself the Birdman um, here in Austin, Sixth Street, and the detail in his face is incredible. I'll try to get some B-roll of it, but uh, overall image quality is amazing. This this lens is sharp at 1.7 wide open. It's sharp throughout the range. Has macro capabilities. Now, when you shoot macro, you are shooting at I think 2.8, so you you don't get that 1.7 uh, aperture. But overall, it's been quick to focus. It, it's just, it's been a beautiful lens. So uh, image quality for this camera, it's so easy to say 10 out of 10. Like the sensor is amazing. The lens is amazing. Um, did not disappoint uh, there for sure. Build quality. So this camera is very interesting. It has no ports. Like the battery comes off from the bottom. You have your SD card in the bottom. That's it. There's no USB. There's no headphone jack. There's no ports. It's fully weather sealed. And they did that because when they launched it, they also launched their Leica Photos app. So you can transfer raw files wirelessly to the Leica Photos app. And so most cameras have a, a Wi-Fi mode. And with the Wi-Fi mode, you can only send JPEG files. You can't send raw files. So for me, like I, on the Canon, I've used it at weddings at a pinch to post a quick image, but never anything serious. With this camera, you can actually send raw files. So it's super cool that I could take a picture, send it to my phone or iPad and edit it as I would on my computer and, and have a full res, fully edited raw file on the go. And that's really cool. And that's kind of like the philosophy that they took when they designed this body with no ports. Now, it is a pain in the ass when I can't charge this camera with the USB-C cable or any cable and I have to pop the battery out and put it in its charger. So like that's a part that obviously isn't the greatest, but it's weather sealed and it's very robust, so I appreciate that. The feel in the hand is great. It's all aluminum. It feels good in the hand. It's not too heavy. I did add the additional Leica grip uh, for my hand and the thumbs up support right here. So the camera feels really, really good in the hand. And again, like it's it's just a body that once you hold it, like you want to use it, right? So build quality is great. I've only had it for three months, not a single issue. So, uh, I mean, thumbs up. 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dock it points for not having ports. I'm, I'm gonna give it eight out of 10 for build quality, only because it doesn't have ports. But my final conclusion is, this is an amazing camera. So there's two ways to look at it. $5,000 is a lot of money, right? And $5,000 is a lot of money. So uh, I, I think if you try and justify this camera, right? If you're looking for a full frame camera with one lens, for a travel camera or for whatever your heart desires, I think this is the way to go, right? Uh, its closest competitor is a Sony RX1 R2, I believe, which is a few years old. And then the most popular is the Fuji X100 series, which pretty much the same concept, except on an APS-C sensor body, a little bit smaller, smaller lens, but again, you're shooting APS-C, right? So I, I think uh, in the full frame world, this kind of stands in its own. and and if you're looking again for a body with a fixed lens, it doesn't get better than this. And if you really break it down, like this lens alone in the Leica world is close to $7,000.
this body, if you look at a Panasonic S1R, for example, right, which I think is the cheapest body you can get the sensor on, is close to $3,500. So when you pair this combo together, it's really not a bad deal. But again, you have to be in the market for a fixed lens camera. Overall, I strongly recommend this camera. It's been fun to use. It's just made me want to take pictures, right? And that's what more can you ask for from a camera? And overall, its biggest con is it's a gateway drug. So after playing with these files, after just having such a wonderful few months with this camera, I am now wanting a Leica M camera, but we'll get to that later. So that was my quick review or quickish review of the Leica Q2. As always, please like this video, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one. Peace.